Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today I will be talking about the importance of fair trial and the rationale of the criminal procedure code. The word trial is not defined in the code though it was defined in the code of 1872 but it had not been defined in subsequent codes of 1882, 1898 and 1873. trial according to stroud's judicial dictionary means the conclusions by a competent tribunal of questions in issue in legal proceedings whether civil or criminal also according to wharton's law lexicon trial means the hearing of a cause be it civil or criminal before a judge who has jurisdiction over it and tried according to the law of land the word trial has no universal meaning in many sections of the code trial has been used in the sense to a stage after inquiry but this word has to give that meaning in which particular context it is used one principal object of criminal law is to protect society by punishing the offenders However, justice and fair play require that no one be punished without a fair trial. In the administration of justice, it is of prime importance that justice should not only be done but must also appear to have been done. Therefore, it becomes absolutely important that every person accused of crime is brought before the court for trial. and that all evidence appearing against him is made available to the court for deciding as to his guilt or innocence now the major attributes of fair criminal trial are provided in the universal declaration of human rights according to section 10 every offender is entitled to fair and public trial also according to section 11 of the universal declaration of human rights such person is presumed innocent until proven guilty our courts have recognized the concept of ensuring a fair trial to the accused in this respect the law commission has accepted the view that the requirements of fair trial relate to the character of the court the venue the mode of conducting the trial particularly trial in public and the rights of accused in relation to defend let us look at the important principles of fair trial the first principle is the adversary system according to the report of the expert committee on legal aid the adversary system is based on acquisitional method In this system as such recognizes as an equal right and opportunity to both the parties to present their case before the court. In this system the entire case is required to be proved by the prosecution. The judge here is more or less works as an umpire between parties and arrive at the conclusions. Now the second important trail is independent impartial and competent judges section 50 of the constitution of india provides judiciary is to be separate from other organs of the state also section 6 of the criminal procedure code mentions the court of executive magistrates as separate category distinct from courts of judicial magistrate such a separation is essential for the efficient and independent working of the judiciary The rules in this regard provide that only persons with sound knowledge of law and with requisite experience and qualifications are to be appointed to these posts. Next is the presumption of innocence. The Supreme Court observed that a thousand guilty men may go out, but one innocent martyr shall not suffer. the principle that the accused person is presumed to be innocent until his guilt is proved beyond reasonable doubt was held by supreme court in the case of 
Babu Singh vs. State of Punjab, 1964. It is of cardinal importance in the administration of justice system and here the burden of proving the guilt of the accused is upon the prosecution. Also, parties to be represented by a competent lawyer. This serves as a necessary feature, according to which if an accused is unable to approach a pleader of his choice, he will be at a disadvantage situation. The constitution provides for the provision of free legal aid to necessary parties who are unable to bear the expense of a lawyer. For them, the government bears all expenses of their lawyer. The provision permitting the accused to appear by his pleader is there in the code to help the accused and not to harass him and the discretion the judge and the magistrate has in these matters is to be exercised judicially was held in N. Deason v. K. V. Baby in the case of 1981. The venue of trial also matters for the fair trial. Section 177 to 189 of the CRPC provides for the place of inquiry and trial. According to it, the place of trial should be at the place of the commission of the crime. Trial at any other place will mean hardship to the parties in the production of evidence. Also, with regard to venue of trial, it is said that a fair trial also requires open hearing in an open court. The accused must be known of the accusations against him. Section 211 to 224 clearly makes a provision regarding the charge. The object of framing charge as stated by Supreme Court in the case of Manipal vs. State of Haryana is that to enable an accused to have a clear idea for what he is being tried and of the essential facts that he has to meet. The accused is entitled to know with certainty and accuracy that exact nature of the charge against him and unless he had such knowledge, his defense will be prejudiced. It is the basic principle of law that before summoning a person to a face a charge and more particularly when a charge sheet is actually framed, the court concerned must be equipped with at least prima facie material to show that the person who is sought to be charged is guilty of offence alleged against him. Also, it is a major fact that the accused is to be tried and evidence is also be to taken in his presence. As a corollary to the above rule, section 273 provides that evidence must be taken in presence of the accused. It was held in the case of Ram Singh vs. R. Failure to do so would vitiate the trial and the fact that no objection was taken by the accused is immaterial. Also, section 278 mentions that if law requires the evidence of witness to be read over to him, such reading shall be done in the presence of the accused or his pleader. In order to acquaint the accused further, the pre prosecution case to facilitate his preparations for the defense, it is obligatory to even supply him with the copies of police report, statements before the police and other documents which the prosecution relied upon. Recent decision. On the plainest requirement of justice and fair trial, the least that is expected is a court to notice, consider and discuss, however briefly, the evidence of various witnesses as well as arguments addressed at the bar very reasonably. A proper speaking order must always justify the acts of the judges and the magistrate was held in the case of Muktyar Singh vs. State of Punjab, AIR 1995. The accused cannot be vexed for the same offence twice. 
आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी सब प्लस टू ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड ऑल्सो सेक्शन थ्री हंड्रेड ऑफ द कोर्ट ब्रीच इज द रूल ऑफ नीमो डेट विस वैक्सरी प्रो ओना एट ईडियम कॉजा इट इम्प्लाइज दैट इफ अ पर्सन हैज वंस बिन कन्विक्टेड और अक्विटेड ऑफ एनी ऑफेंस बाई अ कम्पिटेंट कोर्ट any subsequent trial for the same offence would certainly put him in unjust harassment such a trial cannot be considered a fair and hence have been prohibited by the court it was also held in the case of zahira habibullah sheik versus state of gujarat that each one has an inbuilt right to be dealt with fairly in a criminal trial Denial of fair trial is as much injustice to the accused as is to the victim and the society. The Criminal Procedure Code has seriously looked in all the matters of the administration of fair trial and it is truly attuned by it and the provisions provide for it. Thank you.